Guys, we're here with Screen Rant here at Comic Con 2019. Marcus McFeely, the two best writers in all of cinema right now. Meh. Right now, mm. I'm calling it right yeah. at this very, right yes. at this very Tomorrow, second. Tomorrow it'll be different. You guys are amazing. Um, you guys just had a panel. A lot of uh, I don't know if it's news, but a lot of uh, stuff came out about Endgame, and we knew that there was there had to be tons here because oh, sure. Endgame was yeah. so massive. So it was yeah. everything you guys have been building up to. But uh, the mic drop, I guess in your case, it would be like the head drop, <laughs> oh, um, yeah. right. was, was how brutal Thanos was originally. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. Chat me up about that, because that that's kind of shocking to hear. I'm well, so surprised that everyone's sort of buzzy about it. Uh, the, you know, when uh, Thanos comes uh, back, into the, uh, back into the third act, right, when he figures out what's going on and he works with Nebula to get them to, 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 come, to bring him to to the present day, uh, we had a decision to make. It was like, what's that battlefield gonna look like? Uh, and one of our ideas, pretty early on, it stuck, I was looking at, I was looking at the drafts. We had this, this was in the script for a really long time, uh, was that that battlefield would be in two time periods. So it would be the present day, 2023, and he had just blown up the Avengers compound. And then over there, on the other side of the line, was gonna be 2014 or so, yeah. right? Uh, where he had already gone to Earth, wiped it out, including the Avengers. And so when uh, not when uh, a handful of Avengers come out of the ruined compound and they see this figure walking towards them, they go, what the hell? Oh, we killed that guy. Where is he? What's he doing? And he's got something in his hand. And as he gets closer and closer, he sees Thanos, oh, no, I got. And then he throws something on the ground and it rolls and stops at Steve's feet and it's his own head. And it's like, whoa. And like giant man's corpses in the background and everything's on fire. There might it, even be a throne of skulls. Right. Yeah. Nuts. I mean, it was all, it was one to be crazy, but also to, this is Thanos without the Infinity Stone. Right. Vicious we need Thanos. the biggest fight in the history of the MCU, but we've seen him stronger before. So we need to establish that this guy is no messing around with him, that he's in fact beaten them before yeah. and chopped off their heads. Now, crazy. sounds pretty grim. It is also super confusing because your grandmother's not going to know what's happening over into the, the, the time period part. Why is, is his head confused. both on I, and that's right. off? That's Steve right there. Why is his head on the ground? Like How it's, dare you think my grandmother doesn't watch all these MCU movies? Just like yeah. I <laughs> Super fan. I apologize yeah. respectfully to your grandmother. Um, another character that, that I want to talk about that you, well, I guess Kevin really pushed for this was Dr. Strange. Mm. Um, now he was supposed to go on some psychedelic trip and show Thanos like mm. the, 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 you know, all the things mm. that he did wrong in his life. Talk to me about why that didn't work. Well, that was an infinity war. Okay. Infinity infinity war, uh, yeah. It didn't work because it, it came off as indulgent one. Uh, and it actually didn't, it didn't move the story at all. It, they were fighting Strange sent him on this trip, blew your mind, Thanos figured it out, came right back to where he was before, and smacked Strange down. So it was, a, it was awesome, but again, it was a side trip. Right. And side trips, in a movie with this much story, right. side trips go. And right. we were already intercutting between Wakanda and the fight on Titan. If mm -hmm. we were to add that, that's a third thing we're intercutting. Wow. And again, Grandma's going to be lost. Yeah, well, probably on that one. Hypothetical grandmas, yeah. not, of course, yours. For sure. Buy grandma some DVDs and catch her up, and maybe we could write <laughs> different grand, stuff. That's right. Grandma the cinephile. So you guys also had this uh, board that you showed at your um, at your panel. Yeah. And we were talking a little bit off screen yeah. about how you had different things. Sure. Yeah. But uh, on this board that you guys had, what were some of the most outrageous ideas that just didn't make uh, it in? So the two boards we showed was one was sort of an early version of uh, – Act three uh, beats, right? Like Avengers come back and what they're doing mm. and Tony dying and things like that. The other one was uh, in between drafts one and drafts two, we changed where some of the time heist happens and mm -hmm. the movies we went to and such. So as we were trying to figure out where to go next, we listed every stone and where they had existed in the MCU as we knew it, whether it had been on screen or not. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's what you were looking at there. And then we're deciding, all right, well, what's the most cinematically interesting uh, place you can go retrieve a stone? Yeah, I mean, there were some... There weren't, out, there weren't terribly outrageous ones. There were a lot more boring ones. Yeah, there. Really? You can go to the Triskelion. Yeah. That's a building. <laughs> it's there. You know, you can go to... There was one where there, there was an iteration where Wanda was alive. Uh, right. uh, she hadn't been blipped. Uh, Wanda and Rocket drove a car <laughs> together from the Triskelion yeah, kind of funny. <laughs> to Doctor Strange's house. Yeah. Then used the doorway to go to Comertage yeah. and just get it. 
And it was like, really? We're putting, like, like a cross-interstate car journey yeah. <laughs> in this fast-paced action yeah. movie. Uh, and then wiser heads prevailed. Yeah. And it takes a lot of, of research and development, man, to figure um, this out. I talked to Jim Starlin right cool. before you guys, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. And he talked to me about some characters that uh, that possibly you guys could have included in the film, but may have been cut out. Now, mm. somebody something that was cut out was the Living Tribunal from, yeah. from the original cut. <laughs> right. uh, why was that decision made? Well, no, Tribunal was the end point of that, uh, the Doctor that Strange, trip. Right? Yeah. right. So, again, that we never shot it. That was in uh, just a couple of drafts to, to really try to push the envelope. Uh, and again, that's a grandma thing. Like, you know, that's a three-headed guy who's judging the universe. It's, but it's not even that. It's not even it's just kind of it's really trippy. It's if that guy is more powerful than Thanos, why don't we call him? Like, right. it's, a, it's a whole other level of existence that, the, that we haven't really dealt with yet. I was at the premiere for uh, Infinity War, and as soon as the Thanos snap happened, you yeah. hear, uh, you, I heard, you heard like, nothing. everybody was <laughs> gasping, right? As writers, and you guys know you wrote this, um, what was your thought? When, when you heard the audience have a reaction? Well, it's, it's, uh, it's somewhat unnerving yeah. because it's the absence of a reaction. people don't <laughs> clap or cheer and you have to be ready that like, okay, not only are we leaving them in a state of, of suspension, we're going to have to leave ourselves in a state of suspension because what they, they're liking it, but they're not happy. Right. Um, in the, in a dark room, someone being bored out of their mind and someone uh, being incredibly moved and don't, doesn't know what to say is the same sound. Right. So I don't know what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just had a curiosity. Was there ever any thought of bringing Quicksilver back? Uh, Not on our part, no. No, it was a possibility, but, the, you know, with as much, you know, flack as superhero movies and comics get for dead not being dead you have right. to leave some of these things just have to stay right uh or, or there's no you stakes. just blow stakes out well, that's of the water. A big especially thing. when you're dealing with time travel we had to find ways that right. you know death still has meaning right. time travel is one of the hardest things in sci-fi to really mm -hmm. kind of wrap for an audience to wrap its head around mm. depending on the way, the way it's done um how was your approach to time travel and when did you feel like you know, you 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 cracked it. You got oh, it. Oh well, I mean, whether we cracked it or not is up for the internet to decide. But for us, um, uh, you know, we're going back in time, uh, roughly six times, right? We're, you know, to get six things and bring them forward. If we operated under Back to the Future rules, which again, everyone that it is the de facto way we all think about it because it's such a great movie and it's you know, so important um but if we did that and every and you and you came you and you were altering something in the present your photograph is uh fading away or biff has a casino or whatever uh it would be chaos we could you did it six times but right. you know mm. how do we fix that um so we we were up against it we brought in actual physicists to say listen Let's talk about theoretical time travel because, again, it's theoretical. Uh, and one of them literally said, can I swear on this podcast? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. One of them literally said, well, as much as I look, like Back to the Future, Back to the Future is bullshit. And we went, really? And so that led us down the road to, to at the quantum level, some particles can exist in, this, uh, in two different – the same particle can exist in two different places at the same time. And we said, well, at what level? Well, at the quantum level. Did you say quantum? And so that led us to think, oh, well, what if we kept Scott Lang out of this, keep him over there? He has, you know, that, it literally was science helped us crack this problem. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, you lost me half of what you said, but that's yeah, crazy. Yeah, it's fine. Oh, we were lost. I mean. Like, don't look too close, man. When you're dealing with something like time travel, which, you know, doesn't have actual rules because it doesn't currently exist. Uh, and if it did exist, wouldn't we know about it? Right. Wouldn't they have come sure. back and told us about it? So if the fact that we don't have it means that we'll never have it. But or maybe we're just not an interesting enough time to come back. No, they'd come and talk to me. Would they? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Timey um, wimey, man. Timey wimey. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It is. It's the kind of thing that it slips away from you at all times, including long after the movie has been released, where you're like, I'm pretty sure I understood it last week. How come I don't understand it now? Yeah, what that's, that's a chart I chose not to put up on screen. Yeah. <laughs> Was Steve's fate and Tony's fate always what it was going to be? Let's put Pretty it on the much. board really early. Yeah. yeah. The, the, we sort of figured out it was a really good moment in the room where we went, all right, look at the journeys that these two guys have gone on, right? And then Tony went from selfish, and we were going to ask him to make this the selfless, the greatest uh, sac act, uh, act of sacrifice you can make. Um, and we wanted Steve 
to sort of, you know, go find the life he didn't have. And we realized, oh, to be the complete person, Tony's going to have to lose his life. And to be a complete person, Cap's going to have to finally get one. And we went, oh, that was pretty good. Hey, right? And like so we, we drove towards those moments. I love that. Um, and my last question is, uh, I, and I'm, I'm happy that, the Falcon did become Captain America. Yeah, yeah me too. But why the Falcon over the Winter Soldier? Because that's been a lot of people's... Well, kind of those, they both you know, carry the shield in the comics. Yeah, right. I mean, I would say that it comes down to what Captain America, the character, represents. And he has never represented the status quo of America. He's represented the idealized potential of what America could be. Uh, and I would say Sam and Bucky are that split. Sam represents what a, a, an idealized America could be. And Bucky represents the sort of dark, murky situation that it actually is. And if you want to keep a Cap aspirational, you give it to Sam. You know, if you if you want to go down a very dark path, you give it to Bucky. But you know, I think I I think you had to give it to Sam every time. This isn't to say you couldn't. You know, I don't know what the Falcon Winter Soldier story is going to be. Big wink, right? I don't know. Just I honestly kidding. don't know. Um, but I'm. Uh, uh, if you gave it to Bucky, you can do story there. You haven't left Sam with that much story. Um, I think there's plenty of story for Bucky because uh, he has a past that people aren't going to forgive him for necessarily. Mm. Uh, and but if you give the uh, shield to Sam uh, as an African American in this world right now, what does it mean to carry the shield of America? How does he feel about it? How does he? What are his responsibilities? How do, the burden? How do other feel people feel about him taking? There's it just down. a lot of rich, timely story there. I yes. think. Um, you know, I, that wasn't my last question, actually. I have one more. Uh -huh. So uh, you guys wrote one of my – my dad, honestly, he did not know that Winter Soldier was like a Captain America movie. He just thought it was like this cool movie, right? <laughs> uh, but it is obviously a Captain America movie. Now, if you guys had to take a shot at a DC character, yeah. oh, who would that be? Ooh. Well, I mean, there are you know, certainly cool characters who've been dealt with. I'm trying to think of it. I mean, I certainly – I think Captain America shows that you there are certainly ways to do a really good Superman movie in this day. He doesn't you know you don't have to dirty him up in order to he, you don't have to get rid of his earnestness you know you don't um, so that's you know I'm a big the Christopher Reeve Superman is one of my favorite movies and so that's that's one we certainly borrowed from all the time. I yeah. would love for you guys to do Superman <laughs> some t point in life, please let that happen. You know. It's a short life, and there's a lot of work to be done within it. Well, hopefully Superman's a part of that <laughs> short life and a lot of work to be done. I don't but, know. Uh, a digital copy of Avengers Endgame is going to release on July 30th, and the Blu-ray is going to be August 13th, and I already know that I'm going to be the first one to get my digital copy, and I want the Blu-ray because I want something uh, tangible. Sir. Like a tangible thing. Yeah. And there's so, no reason to stop going to see it in the theaters either. Oh, no, sure. Absolutely We're uh, less than $6 million away. Oh, I hope. I hope. I really do hope. <laughs> do you hear that? Six million people. That's right. Yeah, well, let's no. Why don't they go to the less dollar than that. theater? No, yeah, no please. You, it's easier than that. <laughs> but I, I can't wait to get my copy so I can pause every frame and uh, look for little Easter eggs that maybe you guys it. haven't talked about. Well, frankly, there are Easter eggs that I hear about that I haven't seen. I haven't seen Howard the Duck. No, I, someone's <laughs> I told me. Well, I haven't seen Howard the Duck. I haven't even heard the clanging at the end of the movie because That's I keep right. getting taken out of the theater. That's right. Um, yeah. Again, I would love to see that Superman movie, guys. I'm. I'm hoping that happens. But guys, thank you guys so much for joining us right here at Comic-Con 2019. Uh, again, thank you so much for everything. Thanks, man. Pleasure. Cheers. Thanks, everybody.